Ms. Garcia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And first, I want to thank uh, Director Ray for uh, coming to visit with us again. I know it's been a long day, but just just take a deep breath. We're, we're almost there. Uh, there's just a few more of us to go. Uh, but I want to first thank you and your 37,000 employees for the great job that you do in keeping America safe. Uh, I just want to first asso want to associate myself with all of the uh, uh, concerns that many of us have raised about the the uh, January 6 incident and everything that's happened. Uh, I think that it would be important for us to continue a full investigation. That's why I do support a 9-11 type commission uh, so that we can get an investigation from top to bottom uh, to make sure we find out who is responsible, holding them accountable and taking steps so it doesn't happen again. So hopefully the FBI can play a role in that uh, as we continue forward. I want to change the focus now uh, on, the, on some of the hate crime issues that, that I have uh, seen uh, not only across America, uh, but here in, in my city of Houston. Uh, let me be clear, it is inherently un-American and unconscionable for anyone to discriminate against another because of the color of their skin or where they're from. Yet here in Houston, just this last month, we've seen two incidents uh, that tell me that, that we're not doing enough. On May 14, a bus driver who refused to get off a bus attacked the Hispanic bus driver saying he hates wetbacks, uh, which you may know is a very derogatory uh, term. Uh, several charges were filed with an enhancement to a hate crime. Now, this was February 14th. Two days later, May 16th, uh, at a mall where they had one of these carnivals that kind of come and go, a group of carnival workers punched and kicked a man after they pulled him out of his vehicle and yelled racial slurs. They told the victim that they do not like, quote, black people, and they threatened to hang him. Two reported incidents, almost back to back, and both charges were filed for uh, some other things, and they were all enhanced to hate crimes. This tells me that it's still happening and happening too much. Our police department's hate crime report indicates that in Houston, uh, the hate crimes have almost tripled, tripled in the last 50 years. And many of the crimes here in Houston have been more related to Latino, uh, attacks against Latinos or as this, the, the incident I mentioned May 14th, of uh, people thinking they're quote unquote wetbacks. So my question to you is, how is this a trend that you're seeing nationally of more attacks against Latinos or immigrants? Uh, and if so, what has that caused you to do to reallocate your resources and to make sure uh, that the FBI has what they need to investigate? I'm sure my comadre, uh, uh, Veronica Escobar, will, will later maybe talk about uh, the most horrific about the hate crimes, which was the, the, the gun shooting, shooting in, in El Paso. But what are y'all doing to step it up to make sure that we protect everyone, no matter where they're from? Well, I, I appreciate the question. Hate crimes are uh, certainly a high priority for us. We, in fact, um, uh, had a, from fiscal year 19 to fiscal 20, a 63% increase in FBI hate crimes investigations opened. Uh, and this year, fiscal year 21, uh, we've had the highest number of hate crime investigations initiated uh, in the past five years. So we have, that's about 370 or so hate crimes investigations pending, uh, and they cover the waterfront. You also heard me refer earlier, uh, I think, to the domestic terrorism hate crimes fusion cell that we created to try to capture the, the synergy between those two. So that's part of it. Uh, as far as, uh, and we also do a lot, we're trying to do a lot to engage with the community and with state and local law enforcement, because one of the things we know about hate crimes really across the gamut is that they are historically underreported. So a big part of it is trying to get. But, but my question was, have you seen an increase in the tax against Latinos and what are you doing to reallocate your resources to get to the root causes of that? Well, I'm, I'm not sure about root investigating root causes. We are investigating hate crimes, uh, including against Latinos. I, I don't have the figures for you about increases by well, uh, demographic, you know, but yeah. You also mentioned, because my concern is that if we don't do enough, then we'll see what's happened here in Houston, that even victims don't report because they're scared, number one, and two, there's language barriers. 
and they don't see enough outreach from the FBI in, for people not being able to know. I mean, you told us earlier you want to, if we see something, we need to say something. But unless you tell that to people in Spanish, or you make sure you let them know that they're that if they're victims of, of crimes that they should report it, it's just not going to happen. I, I agree so, that public outreach is time has expired. Important. The uh, witness may answer the question. Uh, and certainly, I know, for example, with the rise in um, hate crimes against uh, the Jewish community, we have, for example, in New York, uh, done an advertising campaign recently in both in Hebrew and in Yiddish to try to make sure we're reaching people there. And so it may be that a similar approach uh, is underway from the relevant field offices. I know in El Paso, I personally visited the crime scene myself uh, as a measure of how seriously I take that attack. The, gen the gentlelady yields back. Christopher Ray was uh, fr flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is, because everything that he said especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is push to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been, you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, and I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated, he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate, they are to go out, they have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking, they have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority, it is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases, and this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like, un unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media.
when you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who... Um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other Capitol she's ever been in is a state Capitol that's open 24-7. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between, you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is. It's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.